If you're disappointed from your cruise vacation, it might be because of one of these 10 reasons up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from WorldCombingBlog.com. When you begin planning a cruise, thoughts of what could go wrong probably aren't what you first think about because nobody wants to be disappointed on their vacation. Now, while cruises are popular vacation choice, if you don't manage those expectations and plan accordingly, you might find yourself wishing that you chose something else. Today, I wanted to go over the 10 really common reasons why people leave their cruise ship totally disappointed, but how you can avoid being one of those people. Let's start out with number one, you chose the wrong cruise ship. As of 2023, Royal Caribbean has 26 ships in their fleet. Icon of the Seas will launch in January 2024, which will bring that number up to 27. That means there are over two dozen ships for you to choose from for your vacation. Picking the right ship matters. Do you want a more intimate cruising experience? If so, you'll like the environment of smaller ships. They also tend to visit more unique ports of calls. You should note though, that these ships tend to be older. And if having newer amenities is important to you, you should spend some time researching whether Royal Caribbean has revitalized that ship or not. Perhaps you want your schedule to be jam-packed with activities, or you just want a lot of variety of activities to choose from. In that case, one of today's mega ships that feature activities like surfing and skydiving simulators and ice skating rings and water slides might be the right choice for you. Number two, I'm going to keep saying this because it rings true still today. People don't utilize a travel agent. Whether you have a lot of questions about the cruise industry or a cruise veteran, booking with a travel agent is still the best way to go. Travel agents are a great resource for any question you may have, such as ship amenities, cabin selection, specialty dining, and shore excursion recommendations. Outside of the cruise, they can also handle logistical arrangements too, like pre-cruise flights and hotels. In short, booking with a travel agent will save you time as you will not have to worry about doing all the research yourself. Number three, they're not clear what's included in Royal Caribbean's base fare. Your Royal Caribbean cruise, unfortunately, is not all-inclusive. It includes unlimited food at certain venues, select beverages, entertainment, accommodations, and transportation between the ports. Anything out of that is gonna cost you extra, so it's important to keep that in mind when setting your cruise budget. These optional add-ons include alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, specialty dining experiences, shore excursions, spa treatments, and some onboard activities. Royal Caribbean charges for their escape rooms, lessons on the flow rider, Royal Babies and Tots nursery services, as well as the North Star on a sea day. Next reason people are disappointed from their cruise is because they forgot to book add-ons in advance. Because speaking of those add-ons, you wanna make sure you book them before your cruise. If you wait until you board the ship, not only will you find higher prices, but some of these, like specialty restaurants, will have very limited availability. As soon as you place a deposit for your Royal Caribbean cruise, you'll have access to the cruise planner, which is where you'll be able to book all your extras, including internet and drink packages, shore excursions, spa treatments, arcade credits, classes, and more. The prices on the cruise planner are less than they'll be on the ship because Royal Caribbean often has sales and promos that make it worthwhile to check the cruise planner every so often. You never know when you'll find an incredible deal on a drink package or especially a restaurant. Another reason people are disappointed with their cruise is because they selected the wrong dining time. When you book your cruise, you'll be prompted to select one of three options, early dinner, late dinner, or my time dining. The first two are part of the traditional cruise experience, while the latter is the more flexible option. If you select the early or late seating, you'll be seated at the same time each night of the cruise with the same table mates and wait staff, meaning that they will be able to learn your preferences throughout the trip. But of course, you're eating at the same time every day of your cruise. On the other hand, those that may not want to stick to a set schedule will prefer my time dining, which allows passengers to make reservations ahead of time for the main dining room that will work well with their onboard and onshore plans. In addition with my time dining, you just simply go to the main dining room when you're hungry, but you could be waiting in line if you do with this option. With my time dining, you will not be seated at the same table each evening as you'll be placed wherever there is an opening when you arrive. Now, dining times only apply to the main dining room's dinner service. You can go to the buffet for dinner at any time during the dinner hour. Similarly, you will not have to select a time for breakfast because it is first come, first serve. So what should you choose? Well, I think in a lot of cases, people don't realize the pluses and minuses to both. With traditional seating, it is a set schedule. It's always the same time every day. That allows to be a little more leisurely in the sense that you can go there and you don't have to wait for a table. But on the other hand, if you've got plans that interfere with your dinner time, you got to choose where you want to do. Next reason people are disappointed with their cruise is they selected the wrong cabin or at least the wrong cabin location. Royal Caribbean has a wide variety of cabin categories, ranging from interior rooms with no natural sunlight to multi-story suites. 
for some, an inside cabin may be the obvious option because they can allocate funds to other vacation expenses. On the other hand, the budget of somebody else may mean that they're able to splurge on a suite. If you're traveling with a family, consider the benefits of booking two cabins for the extra space, even if this means two inside cabins instead of one balcony. Do you think the extra space and two bathrooms will make the cruise better? Would you be okay stepping over everybody else's stuff for a week in a single cabin? In addition to the stateroom category, you'll need to determine where you want it to be located. If you have a preference, stray from selecting guaranteed cabin is your room will automatically be assigned by Royal Caribbean closer to the sailing based on what's available. Now, are you someone sailing with young kids or who likes to return to your cabin earlier in the evening? If so, then staterooms that are near popular late night venues might keep you awake longer than you like. Likewise, cabins near elevator banks are subject to more noise somewhat as they have more people passing by. Personally, it doesn't bother me, but I know some people really do get bothered by that. And depending on your preferences, this is something you need to consider when choosing the right cabin. Again, if you're new to this and you're not sure which kind of cabin to book, a good travel agent can assist you in ensuring you make the right choice based on your needs and wants. Next up on my list is people didn't expect there to be large crowds. Now, this may seem surprising to some people who've cruised a lot, but new cruisers may not be so savvy with it. Cruise ships can hold thousands of passengers at once. In fact, when Icon of the Seas launch, she'll have a maximum passenger capacity of 7,600 guests. That being said, there are moments where your cruise will feel crowded, beginning on embarkation day when you arrive at the terminal. Once on board, you'll encounter a long line of the buffet, packed elevators, or even a lack of pool chairs on a sea day. There are, of course, some good strategies to help you mitigate how often you'll interact with large crowds you can. For instance, dine outside of peak hours, take the stairs to avoid the elevators, visit the pool deck in the morning or late afternoon, and venture outside of the area adjacent to the cruise terminal in ports of call. Again, not the end of the world, but some people have unrealistic expectations when it comes to crowds on a cruise ship. Just like almost any resort or theme park, there are going to be crowds. Does not mean it needs to ruin your vacation, you just simply need to work around it. Also really common is people don't familiarize themselves with ship lingo. You're going to hear words like even on this YouTube channel, like aft and forward and stern and bow, starboard, port, and you're sure to hear them on your ship as well. Taking time to learn what they mean prior to the beginning of your cruise can prevent you from getting lost or frustrated. If you hear port and starboard, know that these are the directional terms used to indicate the left and right side of the ship relative to the bow. That means that regardless of which way you're physically facing, they never change. The bow is the ship's forward most part, and the stern is the rear of the ship opposite from the bow. Forward and aft refer to location, forward is the front of the ship, and aft is the rear. If you decide not to worry about any of the terms that I just listed, at least understand what ship time is. When a cruise itinerary crosses time zones, the ship keeps the same time of the departure port. It does not matter if the local time is an hour ahead or behind. Now, this may change depending on your sailing, but always stay on ship time. Failing to learn and adhere to ship time could result in you missing your ship while in port, even if you thought you had time to get back. And then, of course, there is travel insurance. And a lot of times, people are disappointed in their cruise because they didn't purchase it. When you book your cruise, you'll be asked if you want to purchase travel insurance. This provides coverage for things such as travel delays, medical emergencies, and luggage mishaps. Travel insurance is meant to provide peace of mind in the event that something unfortunate occurs while on your vacation. Pricing is dependent on the total cost of your trip and ranges from $39 to almost $2,000. If your trip, for instance, costs $2,400, purchasing insurance through Royal Caribbean will cost you $199 per person, that is. Royal Caribbean offers one tier of travel insurance that is underwritten by Arch Insurance Company. Note that if you are a resident of New York State, the policy is not available to you. I believe there's something else. So here's what's covered by travel insurance, trip interruption, trip delay, misconnection, accident and sickness medical, emergency medical evacuation, baggage protection and delay, and more. You never know when or if anything will happen, but if you find yourself in an unlucky situation, you'll be certainly disappointed that you opted to save a few hundred dollars and pass on the ad insurance policy. Like all insurance, it's a waste of money until you actually need it, then it's the best money you ever spent. In the case of travel insurance, it's relatively inexpensive and worth getting no matter what. And then of course, there is something that's really at the heart of everything we do here on our YouTube channel, and that is people are disappointed in their cruise because they didn't research the ports of call in advance. To make the most out of your time in each port, you should spend time researching what shore excursions are available. You don't want to miss out on any once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. If you're still into the Caribbean, you might be surprised at what adventure tours are offered, such as ziplining through jungles, taking an ATV tour on the coast, and a lot more. You do not have to spend each day on the beach, although there's certainly nothing wrong with that. When you begin searching, you don't have to book anything immediately. If, however, you see a tour that you know you want to do, it's a really good idea to go ahead and book it and make a reservation as you never know 
how popular an editorial will be with other people, it may sell out closer to the sale date. You don't want to be scrambling to figure out what you're going to do the night before you dock. You may find that certain experiences are already sold out, leaving you with whatever is still available. All right, so there you go. 10 reasons people leave their crews disappointed. In a lot of cases, the common thread is comes down to one thing, not doing enough research, not learning about what they're going to do on a cruise. When you're going on a cruise ship, you're going to be spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on your vacation. You may as well do just a little bit of research to help better prepare you for the trip. So that way you avoid these kind of disappointments. You can have a great vacation going forward. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think leads to the most disappointment among people who go on a cruise, especially if it is their first one. Let me know in the comments down there below. While you're below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.